Hi, I'm Anthony, and today I want to talk to you about something personal. Do you grease your balls? You should. I'll show you why I grease my balls. And a few other things too while I'm, while I'm around this towing area here. So I wanted to just go over my towing setup, uh, what I have currently on my trailer, see what you guys are doing, seeing if there's anything I should change, what your suggestions may be, if you have any suggestions on what you do different, what you've found works fantastic for you, please leave a comment in the comment section. Another thing I want to chat to you guys about today is one of these junction boxes for your trailer. So I have one of these junction boxes on my trailer and I wanted to show you guys what they are about and why you need one yourself. I actually just bought the junction box by itself without the cable attached to it. Oxbeam reached out to me and asked me if I would review this product for them. So that's what I'm doing. So this is a, uh, it's about a six foot or so, something like that. Maybe even longer than that, cable. It's a seven pin connector. Everything's already wired. If you look inside here, all these already have the ends on them and are tightened down. So all you have to do when you tie into your trailer, existing trailer wiring, is to add these eyelets and put and connect the dots, connect the colors. Everything's color coded nice. Got white, black, yellow, red, green, brown, and blue. These is a these are wired standard standard trailer wiring. So there's nothing to be scared of. You should be should hook directly into your truck and your trailer. Everything seems to be made out of very um, rigid plastic. Seems like it should last for quite some time. So what you do is you just fasten this to the side of your trailer. Um, say this is on the side of your trailer tongue here or back in underneath. This has got plenty of long cable here. So you can do that. Mount it wherever you want to. Fasten all your current wiring that you have in the trailer now and it works great. The reason I went with a junction box initially was because I had big knots of wire, wire nuts and tape. It was nasty looking and I was like there's no way I'm going to get this back and get it to look as neat as I want it to look. So I went with a junction box. Mine only had came with just a junction box. I had to run my own cable in. This looks like a very good product. So check it out for yourself. If you need a junction box, definitely check out Oxbeam and click on that link in the description down below. If you're not ever going to move your trailer, there's no reason to get one of these. If you're going to hook it up at all, this is well worth it, in my opinion. I hook my trailer up most of the time, it's maybe twice a week. If I'm leaving my trailer on the job site, I bring it home on the weekends. If it's more than that, it could be every day. I could be going to the job and then dropping the trailer if I have to run to go get materials or something like that. Um, but most of the time it's just, I drop it, I leave it there, and then when I'm done with the job, I pick it back up. Let me get my truck out of the way and I'll show you what I'm, a couple things I'm talking about. So there's a couple different things that I wanna recommend and if you have better recommendations or found something that works great for you, again, please leave a comment in the comment section. We all like to learn. We can all learn from each other. Good products out there. Um, this is a 
a Ram 3500 pound capacity electric A-frame jack. It actually just bolts right to where a spinny handle one would be. Whatever you call those. A spinny handle one, how about that? And, and then you just need to connect. It's already grounded through there. You just connect the power wire to your auxiliary for your trailer. In this case, I have a seven pin plug and I just attached it to this junction box. Again, I would recommend the aux beam one that has this cable already connected to it. It'll save you time in putting it all together, plus it has a much longer cable. And you could actually take this junction box and put it back in here under the trailer, out of the weather or anything, anywhere that you would want it to. I also use anti-seize dielectric grease and put it on the prongs and I squirted it in there and then I worked it in and out of the truck a couple times to keep that from getting corrosion on it and just being dirty in general and not having a good connection. So you saw that while I was running the jack up and down, I could disconnect and connect these chains and my brake, emergency brake controller, all while I was doing that instead of doing one thing at a time. Yeah, it's not. It's a couple seconds. But even when you put this trailer on and off as much as I do, it's not nearly as much of a pain to connect it and disconnect it anymore. I would avoid it if I had the spinny jack. So I would recommend the power jack. This is another thing. This is a spiral. Um, mine came with a clip, like a carabiner clip. And all I did here was just took took a zip tie down along the bottom here to keep this from rotating around. Anything would really work. I mean, even if you got it to pinch there or down a little further, anything to get it to work to keep this from flopping around and getting caught up in the wrong spot and rotating it around too far. So now I just take that and hook it to my, I have a link on my hitch that I hook this to. Stays out of the way. My old one was an old cable one, like everybody has. It was broken. Somebody had, when I bought it, it, it was knotted back together to try to, you know, say it was connected, but it, you know, wasn't really connected. I don't know. It probably would have pulled it, but um, it just wasn't a good way to do things. This stays out of the way. I never have to worry about flipping it out of the way. Um, it's always just right here. And I believe this stretches out to like six feet. So look around, you can buy them. I did see one of these at a trailer shop uh, where I went and got my trailer repaired, got some tires put on it. I did see these there. I got this one, this particular one off of eBay. I'm sure there's some on Amazon. And if I can find one, I'll put a link to that in the description below as well so that you can make your mind up from there. So on my truck, I went with the removable balls. So I have three different sizes of these. The three most common sizes. Now I did have to, this spins here. Really. I did do a little bit of a modification to this. I took this pin right here and it just sits down in there and turns. But I took that and I ground that off. And the reason why is because it was sticking up above this ball. So every time I backed up to the trailer and the tongue was just right there, it would hit that catch on it and wouldn't slide up over top. So I ground that down and put a new slot in it. So here's just what I do. I take some red and tacky, 
this is what I have, this is what local tractor supply or whatever your thing is, and just take a little bit, doesn't take much, and I just, I work the grease into my ball. So here's why I do this. I was towing a different trailer with a different truck. And I started noticing one day that it felt like my transmission was slipping. Something was jerking and carrying on. But it only did it when I run around corners. So I knew it had to be something weird. I didn't think it had to do anything with the transmission. I got home that night, I unhooked everything, and I looked at it and it was dry as a bone. The inside of the coupler, the ball, everything was dry and it was rusty. So I was like, something's, it's gotta be something here. So I took some grease, I put it on the ball itself, I put it inside the coupler, and that fixed the problem. I thought it was a transmission issue, but it wasn't. I was thankful it wasn't. So if any of you are, are are coming across that or running across that where you're getting a, it was like the trailer was jumping or was, because it was, this one here will rotate. So this one here probably wouldn't do it as quick as a, a regular stationary one. If you're getting, if you have that and you're getting that when you go around the corner, it, it's almost like a jumping or a hopping. Like if you have a four wheel drive, you know what I mean. If you're trying to drive four wheel drive on a dry surface on pavement your front wheels will hop around. It was almost that feeling, not that great of a jerk, but it, it jerked enough that I felt it. And I was like, something's got a, something weird is going on here. So I'm glad I found that. So I like to, I tell people now, you know, anybody that wants to know about towing, don't forget about your balls, grease your balls. And I got my other ones in here in the toolbox, so I'm not going to get those out anyway. All right, so while I've got this all, got my hands all greasy and got a glove on, got this grease out, I'm going to go ahead and grease up the coupler. So what I'm just going to do is, I, again, I just dip my hand in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I just take it and work the grease around inside the coupler there. And try to get it over because this doesn't have a zerk fitting or anything like that not that you would need a zerk fitting but you can't really get a, if you had a tube or something with a, a flexible line on where you could you know put your run your grease through get it worked up in that area right in there just to just keep it greased up. That's all I try to do. All right, let me get this glove off. I'm done with that. Here's another recommendation that I have for any trailer owner. You want to keep your trailer. You don't want somebody else walking off with it. Get one of these. It's a Mega Hitch Lock Coupler Vault Pro. Now, these will set you back. They're over $200, but for me, it was well worth the investment knowing that it will at least slow down somebody who wants to try to get my trailer. And most thieves are committing a crime of convenience anyway, so if you can slow them down a little bit, then you're better off. So this is some really thick gauge steel, welded nice, and this right here actually spins so you can't get just get a sawzall blade in there and, and cut it off. So invest in your trailer. You got all this stuff invested in it. Make sure you, that somebody's not just gonna drive off with it. I'll place a link in the description below so you can follow and watch the videos that they put out on YouTube and most of the other locks that you can buy that are $20, $25. You can break those off in under six seconds. So go ahead and check them out. Here's something else I have in my towing setup. And this is the, this is for my reverse camera. 
If you want to see more about my backup camera video, check this card, or I will also put a link in the description to the video I have in my backup camera and how I connected everything. So that just pops on there, screws on there to keep it nice and tight and weatherproof. And then this one goes on my truck. So I don't always hook this up, especially if I know where I'm going. When I'm not sure where I'm going or if I know it's going to be a tight space, then I like to hook this up because I can see down directly behind my trailer. So that's something else you can check out. Anyway, that's about all I have for this time around. Remember to positively impact those around you, and don't forget to make the day the best. Thanks for watching.